Did you know that only about 5% of job applicants will actually get interviewed? And some sources say it's actually closer to 2%. After hearing that, you might be thinking, okay, if I go and apply to 100 jobs, then maybe about five of them will actually interview me. Well, that is not the case, unfortunately. Only the best of the best candidates are going to get hired. We've talked a lot on this channel about becoming a top candidate and how important that is in order to get hired. You've got to be a top candidate if you want to stand out. And most likely, top candidates are going to make up that at 5% that get the interview. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial job. So now let's get into the rest of these stats. Three, two, one. Go. So these stats that I'm going to share with you today are really from all different places all over the internet. Are they 100% accurate? I'm really not 100% sure and they're not actuarial specific either. But even if they're not completely accurate, each one gives you something to think about that is going to ultimately improve your chances of getting an actuarial job. So I've collected seven stats that I found the most interesting, starting with that stat at the beginning that I already shared with you. So now let's move on to stat number two. So stat number two is that a professionally written resume increases your earning potential by 7%. So in an actuarial position, that's the difference between starting at $60,000 per year or $64,200 per year. So why wouldn't you spend the time creating a professional, well-written resume that highlights your qualifications for the job really well? Something that might take you an extra hour or two can increase your starting salary by over $4,000. So it's definitely worth the time. By the way, if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, make sure you go check out the jobs search section before you start your job search because in there there's a whole resume master course that's going to show you exactly what to do to make your resume stand out to actuarial employers and there's also the opportunity to get your resume personally reviewed by me as well okay so the third stat is kind of a two-in-one first 92 percent of companies use social media platforms to look up candidates and along with this one goes 54 percent of employers have rejected candidates based on their social media profiles so you know what this means well basically either you have to make your profile private so that employers can't dig into your personal information and so that your profile can't be found by a simple Google search or you've got to clean up your profile so that it's ready and available and okay for employers to see. You don't want anything on there that's going to potentially deter them from wanting to hire you. Imagine for example you were going to hire me as your one-on-one -on -one actuarial mentoring coach for your actuarial journey. Well if you went to my Facebook profile and saw that there were 10 pictures of me part last week, it's likely going to maybe put you off a little bit, make you feel like maybe I wasn't a trustworthy person or that I wasn't going to be reliable. Well, the same thing goes for employers. If they see these kind of things on your profile, it might be kind of a reason for them to go in a different direction. So you'll definitely want to do that. But in terms of LinkedIn, that's a profile you'll want to leave findable by employers because that's where you can really share a lot of your professional qualifications. You can add things in there that you might not be able to add to your resume, like for example, projects that you worked on that sort of thing. Okay, now the fourth stat is that 65% of employers prefer their candidate to have relevant work experience. Now, you've probably heard me talk in the past on this channel about stepping stone positions. Well, basically a stepping stone position is a position that will give you experience that is related to the actuarial career. Imagine, for example, you were having to get surgery next week and you had the option between two different surgeons. Surgeon A had years and years and years of experience doing surgeries and surgeon B had experience doing surgeries just for the past couple weeks. Well, which one would you rather have do your surgery? My guess is that you're saying surgeon A because they have so much experience. Well, that concept is exactly the same for an actuarial employer. If you have experience doing something similar prior to getting hired, they're going to just have more confidence that you're going to be able to perform well on the job in an actuarial position. And having related experience just gives you so much exposure to different concepts and ideas that might be useful while you're working on the job. For example, when I was working as a bookkeeper, which was a stepping stone position for me, I got a lot of exposure to things like financial statements, budgeting, data input, Excel, VBA, and these are all things that I ended up using in my actuarial role. It's no wonder that employers prefer this, but so many future actuaries completely ignore this. But that is the reason why I have made it one of the top five elements that any future actuary needs to have in order to 
to become a top actuarial candidate, get noticed by employers, and get that first actuarial job. By the way, if this video has been helpful for you so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and also so that it can spread to more future actuaries. I'd appreciate that so, 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 so much. So now let's get into stat number five, which is that 80% of jobs are not posted online. 80% are not posted online. Now, right now in our entry-level actuarial job board, which is part of the Actuary Accelerator community, we have about 120 jobs jobs that are currently posted online. That means that there are about 120 times four, so 480 jobs that are not even posted online. It's crazy to think about how much opportunity is out there that's not even available easily. Well, it's all about your network. Right now, you know hundreds of people that are part of your network, but many future actuaries spend time applying to these limited number of jobs online. And by the way, those jobs that are posted online tend to be the most competitive because they're available to so many people people. But instead, if you use your network to access these unposted jobs, you're probably going to see a lot of success because there's just not going to be as much competition and you'll have someone from your network referring you or recommending you to the job. In fact, 60% of jobs are found through networking. Now, LinkedIn is a big part of engaging with your network. So that's the number one place to start. If you're a member of the AAC, make sure you head to the job search section because in module three, I think it is, there's a whole bunch of resources there to help you create a really good LinkedIn profile and start networking on LinkedIn in order to get a job. And by the way, networking is something that you can start very early on in your career. It's going to allow you to grow your network bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So by the time you actually do start going to look for actuarial jobs, your network has grown substantially since the time you started. It also allows you to keep your network up to date with your progress on the actuarial journey. Okay, now stat number six is that the number one reason people change careers is for career opportunity. I honestly thought that the number one reason would be for salary increases, but I guess I was wrong on that. With the actuarial career in particular, both salary and opportunity are big parts of the decision to have someone switch into the career. In the actuarial field, the opportunity to advance is almost endless. Actuaries often have the opportunity to go into leadership roles like CFO, CEO, CRO, and they're able to have a big impact on the insurance company or the companies that they work for because they've been able to gain such a good understanding of how the insurance company works. And they've done that because they've probably worked in several different areas throughout the company and they have years and years of experience. So if you're someone that is considering the actuarial career for the opportunity or maybe the salary, then you are not alone. It's definitely a big decision, but if you feel like the actuarial career would be great for you, if it really interests you, then I have absolutely no doubt that taking on this challenge and adventure will benefit you whether you decide to pursue the actuarial career long term or whether you just start out and decide not to pursue it later. You are going to see benefits in your career no matter what. And maybe that's something I'll make a video about in the future about the sub benefits of becoming an actuary and pursuing the actuarial career because there are so many of them. If that's something you want, make sure you leave a comment down below um, and let me know so that I know that's a video you'd be interested in. Okay, now the seventh stat is a quick one. 76% of resume rejections are due to unprofessional email addresses. Now, I think 76% of rejections being due to just one factor seems a little bit high, but who knows for sure. But you might as well avoid this possibility altogether by creating an email address that is professional for your job search. So that means no tigerman8692 at godaddy.com. It means avoiding ones like actuary82093, that sort of thing. Just use your first name and your last name name, maybe one or two numbers at the end if you have to, that's totally fine. And make sure you're using a common email provider like Gmail, maybe Hotmail, something along those lines. Even a school email address is great. Just keep it simple, make it easy to remember, and don't make it crazy. So now that you know these seven stats, make sure you go watch this video next. It's filled with three must know tips that you absolutely need to know before you start your job search. So that's all for this week, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.